All right, I'm recording. Um, so, I mean, but but one of my one of the things that that falls into that category for anyone who's trying to say that the Bible tells us what God wants about sexuality. Um, in the very first creation story, when it talks about the first human, the first human is a male and female being that they, God, created, and Elohim is a plurality God, and that Elohim has masculine and feminine attributes. We see that in the verbs and the adjectives that are being used. And then in the second creation story, God creates this, this uh, helper that is a masculine word, but then turns into a fem is a feminine thing. And I think that sexuality is way more fluid in the creation story than the Bible thumpers are, pre are trying to force us to believe. Mm -hmm. Amen. The end. That's my story. We could talk about that another time, but um, I'm just saying that's, that's my version of how I read the Torah anyway. Um, because I already know people, <laughs> and I know that people and words are not as masculine and feminine as some people are trying to make them seem. All right, number five says, Habat Hatova Brucha. Habat Hatova Brucha. And I hope you're saying this. Habat Hatova Brucha. Habat means the daughter. Hatova means the good, so that means the good daughter, Berucha, is, a blessed. is blessed. Is blessed, right? Yes. And that's an adjective. It's not an. It's not a verb. It's not saying we are now watching her being blessed. We're saying that she is a blessed creature. Is blessed. Did we say it that way? Is blessed. I don't know how to say it. Um, habat tova uvracha. Habat. Tova uvracha. So I want to point out a few things. I want you to see that this has this is the only word with ha. So that comes on the other side of the sentence from the rest of it. Um, we do this again if we're separating out. So this is separated out subject to predicate, and this is subject to predicate here. The daughter is, is which is implied here, is good and blessed. blessed. Oh, yeah. And then we have this and and it's and since we haven't seen and here's another and we haven't seen and in action enough together to be able to point out that this is the most common way of seeing and this one here this is the most common way of seeing and v at the beginning of a word but when it starts before those certain things it's going to turn into an oo and it's not a vu because a vu looks like this you have a consonant and then you have the vowel that's terrible but you see what i mean yeah. This is not a consonant vowel. This is just a vowel. I'm not going to lie to you. There's some words when if you see this, that vowel with a dot in it, it's just a consonant, but it's not both at the same time. <laughs> it's not a consonant and it's not a vu. Let's put it that way. It is absolutely, if all you see is this, if all you see is this, it is not a consonant and a vowel at the same time. It's not a vu. It is just an oo. So when I have a boom letter, so this actually, for two different reasons, I would have had to have an oo because the first letter was a bet, the first letter was brucha, or because there's a schwa under the first letter. Those are two reasons why the vo becomes an oo. And so for both of those reasons, we're going to say the daughter, hat, ha, bat, tova uvracha, is good and blessed. And then we're going to say bruchot, I'm going to show you my spotlight. Bruchot habanim hato ha, sorry bruchot habanot hatovot bruchot habanot hatovot so we're really good at finding the ha so we only have a ha here and we only have a ha here we do not have a ha on the first word so we have bruchot blessed are habanot hatovot the good daughters so what the heck is the 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 predicate doing at the beginning of the sentence why did we have blessed are the good daughters. Shouldn't we say the good daughters are blessed? You know what? It doesn't matter. We could have said it either way. Our job is just to interpret what we saw. We are not in a position in this class to be writing our own sentences, although you could, but we are not in a, that's not our job. Our job isn't to write our own sentences. Our job is to understand the sentences that are there. And 
the glorious thing about Hebrew is that the word order is fluid. So if I say to you, if I say to you, whoops, blessed. Get over here. Come here. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Whoa, Come I need here. to tell you some things. Um, I need to tell you some things that I didn't tell you. Somebody reminded me that I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, we just have to understand what's going on. What I love that's glorious is that the, um, the word order can be very fluid. If I say blessed are the good daughters, or if I say the good daughters are blessed, does it feel a little bit different that I hear blessed first? Mm -hmm. Blessed are the good daughters, or the good daughters are blessed? Or, right. or if I say the, the good kings are big, or, the, or big are the good kings, doesn't it hit you in a different way? Yeah. And we can have that way easier in Hebrew than we do in English. So I, I, want to be, I want to remind you that nowhere do you need to know what the parts of the speech are. If I say subject and predicate, I am fine with nobody having a clue what I mean, but just let me know if you don't know what that means. Because some people are like, oh, thank goodness, now I know which is the subject and which is the predicate. Um, and some people are, are, as soon as I say the word subject or predicate, they're going to pass out. They're not going to hear anything <laughs> you say. Um, so, um, and usually what, just so that I can review just quickly, because you've all spoken sentences. So the, the, the subject is usually the part of the sentence that does. Okay. <laughs> Somebody just passed out. They told me they were passing out. <laughs> I need to bring smelling salts. We did that. When I went to Middle Magnet to the, to the um, they have like a day when parents could go and walk around the building when they're having classes. So you could see if you want to send your kids here. And we went to uh, an, a language arts class first. And they were diagramming sentences. So there were these really long sentences on the board. And there were arrows and lines and predicates and adjectives and subjects and blah, blah, blah. And it was, all, it was really cool. I loved it. And then we get to, and I was very impressed that this eighth grade class or whatever it was, was doing that. And then we went to a math class. And there were like no numbers on the board. It was all letters. And my head started to spin. And I'm sure that my, all the blood went out of my head. And my knees started to get wobbly. And we walked out of the room. And one of the moms said, oh, thank God we did the math. Because I thought I was going to pass out in that English class. <laughs> and, and it was like really funny because I was the exact opposite. So I know how it feels. I mean, I get it. And some people, and that's why... Don't even worry about if you get it or don't get it. But some people are very excited when I use these words. And some people, you may never have to hear it again. And you left high school. La, 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 la. <laughs> um, so the subject, the subject is the part uh, that looks like, Marla, I'm going to mute you for a second. The subject is the part that does the stuff, the doers. And the predicate is usually the action and who the action was done to. So if I say... Um, I read a book, I am the one who's doing the action, and that's the subject. I'm the subject of the sentence. I'm the one who does it. The predicate is the, why they call it a predicate. I have no idea because it's a word that doesn't seem to mean anything. But the predicate is usually the rest of the sentence, the action, and then the what's happening to the action. So that's it. And, and don't worry, I will never test you on, well, which part is the subject and which part is the predicate. But some people were really happy that I said those words. Um, Sorry? Adverb. Uh, well, yeah, we're not going to get to adverbs for many, many chapters. Don't worry about that yet. <laughs> and adverbs are going to come. Adverbs are, uh, you whatever. I'm going to let you watch Schoolhouse Rock again. They're really good at that. <laughs> um, and then you'll have a little ditty in your head, and you'll say, oh, yeah, it's a person, place, or thing. You know, you'll have the songs in your head. Um, <laughs> Avraham, Avraham v'habanot bruchim. Uh, and this is very cool, because watch what they did here. They just mess start with our minds about gender here. Avraham is Abraham. The Habanot and the daughters. Avraham the Habanot and the daughters Bruchim are blessed. Abraham's daughters are blessed. So Bruchim is masculine or mixed plural because Avraham is masculine and singular. But as soon as I add by saying and um the daughters, as soon as I add it to that, um, Abraham and the daughters, then I put them both together, and the bruchim has yeah. to be masculine, That's mixed, right. plural. Because, right. they're, because they're, it's a mixed group. Because it's mixed. 
Okay. All right. Um, and then our six, and, and again, all you have to do, I am not asking you, how would you have said that sentence? Right. All I'm asking you is if you see this, Avraham, Vahabanot, Bruchim, Abraham, and the daughters are blessed, would you be able to work out what that says? Mm -hmm. Eventually, yes. Yeah, the person who fainted is still fainting. I have, we still need to revive. We need to revive. We, we, I need like this virtual smelling salt. That's what I need. Uh, and actually, oh. sorry, Mar well, Marla is still gone. Marla, are you there? The dog was barking. If you're there, you're going to have to unmute yourself and ask your question again. We lost you for a second and your dog was barking. Um, oh, I haven't figured out how to mute my phones. That's what was, it was there was no dog. It was the phone rang. <laughs> okay, got it. Oh yeah, you had the you had the phone. Somebody else had a a dog. All right, and just so that, and I can't unmute anybody, so you guys have to do that. That was Patty. So sometimes if it's distracting enough, then I might mute you, and then when you need to, you unmute yourself if you need to. Um, uh, I was waiting for you to unmute me. Okay, I, and I so if if you have lived through this pandemic and have been on Zoom since March of what year was that? 1960 to whatever <laughs> if you've lived through this pandemic when i started doing zooms in march i had full power to mute and unmute you and it was a really good thing because nobody knew how to do it and i didn't even know how to teach you how to do it um and i would mute and unmute you and then when we started having things like zoom bombings and how everybody in the whole world had to um be able to communicate on on zoom they had to have their meetings on Zoom. So imagine this scenario. Imagine that this is not a Hebrew class. Imagine that this is a board meeting. And at some point, the secretary comes in, and I'm the boss, and the secretary comes in, and he says, he starts whispering in my ear, you're not going to believe what just happened. <laughs> you know, all of the cars that we tried to make have all just burned up in a fire. Now, if you were listening on that, you would have had all this insider information but if I muted first, and now you didn't hear what he said, then you wouldn't have any of that information. But if I have power over who gets to be muted and not, I got to turn it on and you didn't realize it and I just heard all of your secrets. The problem is, and that makes perfect sense to me, the problem is we're talking about five-year-olds <laughs> and the five-year-old doesn't know how to mute and unmute themselves. and. I need to be able to mute and unmute people who like, or the people who are sitting way back here and they can't reach their screen anymore because they're sitting in their lazy boy and they can't reach it. I, it really helps if I can mute and unmute and I can't do that anymore. I can mute everybody, but I cannot unmute anybody. So I have, I have limited power. All right, um, I'm, I'm gonna tell you what, we have done a lot of these. Does anybody have more questions about this part? Okay, I have a question. Yes. On, on the one we just, can we go? Wait, let yeah. Me, yeah, let me go back. Um, and just real quick. Yeah, okay. please. Uh, on five, uh, the second one, the first, it's a uh, Habat, Habet. Habat is ah. Uh, look, so let me show you, I'm going to show you a trick. Wait, can I show you a trick? I'm sorry to interrupt yeah. you. Okay. So, oh, good. And I know some people, um, and I, I'm not going to lie, and I'm not saying this is you, this is, but somebody here is like more left brain than right brain or more right brain than left brain. And vowels are really, um, they all just blend together for yeah. some people. And, and so I, what we could do is we could practice our vowels again at some point because I have that really cool aerobic vowel thing that you become your vowels. But I'm going to show you a secret. We know that this is ha because we know that's how you say the, even if you don't, Pay it to, and I'm not saying you. I'm just going to show you a secret for, that'll help everybody. I want you to notice that it's the same exact vowel. Mm -hmm. So all yeah. you have to do is you knew it was ha, just, re, just repeat to uh -huh. ha and then bot. Right, exactly. So without even remembering what vowel it is, you know it's a ha, just carry it uh, Thanks. Okay. Well, okay. It seemed like there was one where there was a, and now I can't find that it's not yeah. here, but there was a dot in the middle of the B. And oh, then this below, one. There, the dot disappeared. It's this one. It's, it, it's exactly this one. So yeah. what? You yeah, have I this, see. you have Habat HaTova Brucha, and in the yeah, next one you is, say right. Habat right. Tova Uvracha. So it, it disappears, right? Yeah, 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 that's right. So why does it disappear? So the, I'm glad you asked. So the why, and, and I will keep answering this. One day I am going to give you the 
the, all the details about, and it's really, it's painless at some point, but until you have enough words, it's not as painless, then it's just more information to stick in your head. I probably answered so, before, I'm sorry. So, uh, no, uh, no. Well, well, yeah, I, I will probably say this every single time, and you'll appreciate that I'll say it every single time, because you're going to understand it in different ways. But what happens is this. The bet is a letter that when it comes at the beginning of a word or syllable, it takes a dagesh. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's at the beginning of the word in bracha. Mm-hmm. It's at the beginning of the word at bat. It's the beginning of the word at bruchot. It's not the beginning of the syllable in avraham. This is the same uh-huh. exact letter. Okay. So that, that dagesh comes out. What happens here is that one of the times that the dagesh comes out, it's the exact same word, brucha and uvrucha. It's the same word, but the dagesh comes out because it comes after a long vowel. Do you know what the long vowels are? No. Do I expect you to know what the long vowels are, Nar? No, I do not expect you to know them, but you will become more and more familiar with what they are. And pretty soon, I will teach you everything you need to know about long and short vowels and dagesh, and your whole world will be so much happier for having known it. Except for those people who are going to pass out and they're going to la-la-la, and that's fine for them too. But I'm... But yeah. this is exactly what's happening. What happens is here it's the beginning of the word, bracha. And here uh-huh. it's not the beginning of the word anymore, and it pops out. And did you notice it's the same word anyway? Yes. Thank you for noticing that brucha and uvrucha is the exact same word. It's just that this one has an and in front of it, and that and makes me have to take out the dagesh. Uh, and that's what happened. And it's a, it's a really, I'm so glad that you brought it up because it's really important. Not everybody recognizes it as the same word because you're so used to thinking it's brucha. That's not brucha anymore. It can't possibly be blessed. Maybe you think it's, I mean, if you saw it separately, you think, oh, it's a V. Exactly. And, and what happens? Because it's in brucha. hundred percent. And what happens is when you're a, a beginning student, like first grader, I'm going to call it, it is really helpful for you learn, to learn that bet and vet are two different letters. Mm-hmm. But, um, but you're now in second grade, and, or some of you are even in third grade, and, um, and it, they're not two different letters. They're the same letter, but sometimes it has to take a dagesh, and sometimes it cannot take a dagesh. And that's the difference between the two letters. It's not two different letters. But when you're learning to read, it's easier to make it say that it has two different sounds. But, but it's they, not. They are pronounced differently? They want, well, this one is of there are six letters that at the beginning of words or syllables take a dagesh, right. and three of them have. I'm going to write them down again. Three of them have um, a, in pronunciation. a different pronunciation with or without the dagesh. So you have right. the bet vet, you have the kaf chaf, and you have the pe fe. And in modern pronunciation, those are the only three that have three that have a different pronunciation, mm-hmm. and so. And, and so it feels like a different word, and it feels like a different letter. It is not a different letter. It is the same letter, but you're going to have to recognize that it is a different sound depending on where it is in the word. Mm-hmm. And it's a similar thing that you're going to have to learn because it kind of blows our mind when we see it. It's a similar thing. Did we have this here? Hold on. Uh, whoops, it's still not turning into a mouse. Turn into a mouse. It's a similar thing to recognizing when you learn, whoops, I should get rid of that, shouldn't I? No, I'm going to leave that there. Whoop. So it's a similar thing that if you say melech, where did my melech go? Here, here. If you say melech, you have a final chaf here. If you've learned that the word is melech with that, then as soon as it goes into a plural and you've got that letter instead, it blows people's minds. That's a final chaf. Whoops, that's not a final chaf. How is it the same word? How is this the plural? It's the same thing. Mm-hmm. You're going to notice with Rav, this one, you have a vet at the end. As soon as I turn it into anything else, I add anything to it, it turns into a bet. That's the opposite direction. So you're going to have to start your second grade, you know, you have to put your second grade bonnet on, and you're going to have to panties, whatever they call it, put your second grade panties on. <laughs> and you're going, to have to, you're going to have to recognize that those three letters right here, they are, it's going to depend on where it is in the word, what it, it essentially comes, has to do with what comes before it, whether or not it's going to have those sounds or not. But they are the same exact letters. And I am going to tell you now, it really helps when any of you say, but wait a second, because it, it, it helps. Some people, it's going to be really helpful to have the, um, the um, 
Some people will like to see the paradigm. They like to see the rules. And if I tell you that the dagesh is always going to be there, and some people are going to have to memorize the words as if they're separate words. Mm-hmm. So, and that's why I give you the flashcards where melech is a separate flashcard than melachim. As opposed to some people are going to say, well, that's an easy lick. It's there, there's the singular, you add the him, that's a plural. And not everybody, everybody's going to learn differently. So just saying. Does that help? All right. So Michelle has a raisy hand thing. Um, yeah. No, so she's asking a dagesh question. And that's kind of, and I, I was trying to make a point about, uh, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> In Hebrew, that's what you call the, the punctuation or the points, the nikudot. Um, the, the point is you can be really good reader. You can understand everything that you see without ever having a clue about a dagesh, ever. And I'm saying you could be reading for decades and never know anything about dagesh and be a very good uh, fluent reader. You can decode the sounds and you can understand the words and never know anything about dagesh. I was. I had been studying for about 10 years before I had ever heard anything about the Daigesh rules. For me, and I'm not a math person, I mean, it feels to me very structural. I loved learning the Daigesh rules because it stripped away the fact that I was seeing every time I saw this word, this word, melech, and this word, ha-melech, absolutely looked like two different words to me. And it absolutely looked like there was a mistake in one. And now when I look at them, I'm going to tell you, I, there is, there, it is so glorious, it, it comes together so magnificently that I feel comfort when I see that this word doesn't have a dagesh and this word has a dagesh. I feel so glorious about that. And not everybody is going to feel that way. So I'm going to try to give it to you in all of its per, per, permutations here. And this is already more information than most people need to know. So when it comes down to it, can you, do you know the difference between Ani Melech Gadol, I am a big king, or Ani HaMelech HaGadol, I am the big king, can you figure that out? And, and if all you know is that this word is I, and this word is king, and this word is big, then you're going to get to the end of the sentence. It's going to make yeah. some sense to you. And it's really fine. And if, if the fine-tuning is, is going to matter, you're going to figure out that these two ha- is an adjective because there's a ha-ha. Because your very cool teacher taught you that there's something called the ha-ha principle. And that has something to do with adjectives. Ha-ha means the big king instead of the king is big. I mean, because she said ha-ha. It makes sense like that. Is that good? That's good. Thank you. So... I, and I, I, I'm going to apologize ahead of time, every single time, that sometimes when someone asks a question, if, I, if I'm answering with too much information or not the right way, that it didn't make sense. It's going, I hope it makes sense to at least one person, but it may not make sense to everybody, and that's okay. You know? And Marla is raising her hand again. Marla is really good about the raising your hand thing. How do you do that? I'm wanting to know why <laughs> I'm only seeing people in a split screen. And I can't get rid of it to be back to you. Um, not to see me. Well, the so I'm unsharing for a second. Can you see everybody now? I see um, Elaine and Patty. So can you click on the, t- are you on a computer? I'm on a tablet. So on the top right, you're going to see three dots. Yeah. Or oh, somewhere you're on at the bottom. Somewhere you're going to see, somewhere you're going to see yeah, Allah, across the top, somewhere you're going to see a speaker view versus a gallery view versus a two bar view. You want to go to gallery view so you could see everybody. Well, but okay, hold on one second. So you're on the tablet. You just have to, I only see three people now. Yeah, you, you have to swipe. You're on page two of all the people. So you just have to swipe it back. Swipe for, mm-hmm. On a tablet, you only get nine pictures on a screen. Uh, that's good I, I like I see what you're saying you you have two pages pretend you're scrolling yeah. back and forth with your pages yeah what I'm what I'm asking is am I supposed to see instruction screen or am I supposed to be seeing no well, she right, just put everything else down so all right now doing. right now all you see are people okay and that was my question and then before there was supposed to also be text and if you didn't see that then we're gonna have to fix that 
No, I did see the text, but after I unmuted, all of a sudden, all I was seeing was people. Yeah, and I I took away the screen share so that we could uh, so that we could fix things. Hey, right. hey Rabbi, before yeah. we move on, so yeah. the gadol and the mem and what's the sixth letter that can take a dagesh? Because oh, so you, you know, want to know six letters for dagesh? Yes, because right. you know I can't leave until you tell me all six. Nice. Letters. Okay. Dead, right. A little. Ha, ba, 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 ba. Yeah. Yep. And I think actually there's a place where all those rules are. Yeah, so we called it, there's two things. I'm giving you, um, are, you sh are you sharing the white screen? Yes. Yes. Okay, I'm going to try to write these letters as sucky as that is, I should do it. As, so these are the six letters that always take up dagesh at the beginning of a word or sy syllable. Bet, Gimel, Dalit, Kaf, and I'm putting a dagesh in the ones that change. Fe and Tav. We call them Beged Kefet. The Beged Kefet letters always get a dagesh at the beginning of a word or syllable. And I'm going to see if we have, if the guidelines are, are posted. And if not, I'm going to post them. And I will put them on our page too for you, for those of you who, are, who love these rules. Okay. Bet Gimel Dalit Kafe Tav, and we call it Beged Kefet. And the three that I put dots in change their, their pronunciation. So it's a bo with a dagesh and a v without a dagesh. And it's a k with a dagesh and a ch without a dagesh. And it's a p with a dagesh and a f without a dagesh. These other three letters used to have a similar thing where you have a attack sound with the dagesh when it's at the beginning of a word or syllable and a flowy sound when it's at the end of a syllable. So you have things like... Um, where like rav instead of rab at the end of a word, at the end of a syllable. So it makes sense to have a attack sound. And here's a really cool thing. Your attack sound is called a plosive. <laughs> Isn't that cool? There's explosives and implosives. This is just plosives, the sound. The b -k -p. These are plosives. So the Beged Kefet always have a dagation at the beginning of a word or syllable except when they come after a long vowel or an open, an open syllable or a moving shot. And the never rules always overrule the always rules, but you don't have to worry about that. Don't worry about it. I'm not kidding. Don't worry about it. But that, that's that. I'm going to stop the share. I will try to find those rules for you. It's in, um, I think I have them posted in the biblical Hebrew and not in ours. Um, all right. I'm going to share. I'm going to share the screen for a second. And I wish we already finished. Nobody's supposed to be here anymore. I'm going to share the screen for a second. I'm moving you all down here. Um, all right, so you should see the web page, right? So for one second, I'm going to go to Biblical Hebrew and see if the rules are here so I can show you where to find it. If you go to Biblical Hebrew and you go to the 2019 class updates and extra handouts, then there should be the handout spelling guidelines somewhere. And most people are not going to have to worry about this. These are for our third graders. <laughs> um, this is, yeah, we're, most people are we're not second to, grade, right? Yep, some right. Of, most of us are second grade. Um, yeah. So this is a textbook that I helped create when I was in college um, that was a supplemental grammar thing. It tells the long and short vowels. It tells you about a sneaky patach. It tells you about the schwa, that there's a moving schwa and a resting schwa. It tells you about a composite schwa. And then it tells you about dagesh. So the dagesh is going to come in the Beged Kefet letters. It's going to, and it also come in other letters um, to double their consonants. It serves three purposes in those. And I'm not teaching you that yet. I, I really am not going to teach you that yet, but some of you want to know that. So I'm giving you that to you for now. But I, I will teach it to you, or maybe one day we'll have a, a day uh, outside of the class for people who won't pass out on me when I teach them rules. I do try to teach it in a way that makes you not pass out. I do really try to do that. All right, I'm coming out of all of these. We're going to go to liturgical Hebrew for a second because I wanted to show you that we have chapter six is up. I do not yet have the prayer book, the, the lesson, and I'll go up soon. I'm going to make this bigger, but all these things are here. Um, and we didn't teach anything about chapter six yet. And don't believe that there are 1,400 um, hits I, this is a baby. It's a baby. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything, but I, I don't like getting rid of it. So this is our vocabulary. 
Mm -hmm. I'm going to introduce the vocabulary to you. Did we do this last time? I don't think so. I'm yeah. going to introduce. Oh, yeah. No, not for this week. I'm going to introduce the vocabulary before we go for those of you who wanted to get an, a head start. So, and what I and how I wrote it. So, here's the thing. Um, it's a Sunday afternoon. There is no COVID. We're thinking about buying a new house and a new neighborhood. We're moving to a new place. So we're driving around and we say, oh, look, there's a nice house. Let's buy it. <laughs> and we drive around and we a little more and we say, oh, look, there's a nice house. Let's buy it. How do I say house in Hebrew? Buy, buy it. it. Yep. Buy so buy it. it. And I'm going to point out that we just talked about how most of the time, I think I made up 97% of the time, the accent is on the last syllable, except when it's an e -e word, like this word is chesed. So this word is going to be e -e and the accent's going to be on the first syllable. Mm -hmm. But the other pattern where the accent is going to be on the first syllable is if you see in these two vowels specifically with the yud in the middle, an mm -hmm. a pattern. So like yayin is wine. And zayit is is a, a an olive, and buy it is house. But you already knew that because I said there's a nice house. Let's buy it. So the accent is on the buy. <laughs> so uh -huh. it's buy it, and the plural is batim. 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 And anybody who knows anything about dagesh is probably crying like I did. I wrote a panic message to my professor Sunday night to say, why is there a dagesh at that time? It breaks all the rules. I don't like this. I'm stressing about this. I'm still stressing. He didn't write to me yet. So batim means houses. So what I've done is I put a, an, a, a whatever this is called, a slash between the singular and the plural. So And you're going to see that in the translation too. Bayit is house, batim are houses, and it is masculine. And they're both masculine. Donna, didn't you say that the dagesh also can double the consonant? Yes. That's so, not what's happening there. Well, but I hear it in both in both syllables. I hear batim, bat when you yeah. say it it sounds like it's doubling i know and uh, and it it may be but it shouldn't be you should never have a dagesh after a long vowel ever and we do and i don't know why <laughs> so i'm just saying we, so in this case we're definitely doubling the consonant but in this case it's not it's ba team we after a long vowel you have to break the syllable so it's really ba team and you may be saying two syllables there and you may be right but it shouldn't be that's a short, it is never boat team, and that would be the short vowel version. So I give up. I'll let you know when I find out the answer, but I don't know the answer right now. I'm still like twitching about by team. So by it, it's probably one of the five anomalies. There's like five words. You're, every rule is allowed five words where it doesn't fit in Hebrew. And this is probably one of those words, one of the five words. And the other ones, they give us reasons. They say, well, they did that on purpose because it doesn't fit the, the pattern. I'm like, okay, I could live with that, but this one doesn't, I don't like this one. All right, so buy it to batim, don't worry about it, but there is a dagesh, I had to look it up, and it's there. Chesed means loving kindness, and that's not what it says in your book, but I added that. It's, it's a special kind of kindness, and it's a special kind of loving. It is a loving kindness. That's true. I like that. And I would have to give you lots of examples of what chesed is for you to understand because it's not really a word that we use in English and it takes two words for us to explain it. It is a wonderful thing. And the plural is chasadim. So why does it have all of these vowels changing? And the answer is an e, -e like melech, is always going to go to melachim. This is the shva kamatz pattern. It's just that I can't have just a schwa under a guttural, I have to have a composite schwa. Just trust me on this. We'll work on it. You don't have to know it. You just have to know that chasadim is the plural of chesed. Chesed is the singular. Chasadim is the plural. And it has to do with loving kindness or mercy. So that's what chasidim means. It's related to the word chasidim, uh, which is kind of shocking to anybody who knows chasidim, that, that their name means loving that's kindness. Right. It's, it's a little yeah. bit shocking to some people. There is an idyllic version of Hasidism that that's what it means to what it's supposed to mean, but it doesn't always mean that. All right, Yom is day. Yamim are days. A lot of times you're going to find that when something goes from the singular to the plural, that the vowel gets shorter. This is the short vowel version of that, but it's, don't worry about it, Yamim. Yom, Yamim. Hayom means, it looks like it means the day, but it also colloquially means today, today. Hayom is today, but it can also mean, it is how you have to say the day, but it also means today. How do you say that again? How do you say that? Hayom. Hayom. 
Hayom. So it's like if you just take Yom, it's day, like Yom Kippur is Day of Atonement. Right. But Hayom looks like it's just the and day, and it does mean the day, although your book doesn't tell you that, but it does mean the day, but it also means today, because the day is today. But it's not always today. <laughs> does that make sense? <laughs> I could say like the big day, I would say Hayom Hagadol is Thursday, and Thursday is not today. So, but if I'd say, well, what day were they supposed to come? And I want to say today, I have to say Hayom. Mm-hmm. That that's how you say today. So I added some of these things, and then you get. <laughs> I added the punctuation. If I want to ask the question "what," then it's "ma," but depending on what the next word is, the next letter is. Sometimes it's going to be spelled "meh," and sometimes it, it's going to be spelled "ma," but they all mean "what." Yeah, I was wondering about that. Okay. So and so and in ma, some meh, cases. Ma. Yeah, ma, 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 ma. Um, in some cases in biblical Hebrew and therefore liturgical Hebrew, it also means how. Like if I say, hine matov, behold how good and how pleasant, you don't say, behold, what good is it? <laughs> what pleasant is it for people to live together? You don't say, what good is it? You say, how good is it? So I wrote, I wrote the punctuation in because it's more like, what? Or it's how. <laughs> It's not the question how. This is not the question how. How good is it? It's not that. It's how good is it? It's that. So I added punctuation so you could get it. And that's part of why I wanted to introduce it to you before you started learning it. You know a word that has melech, right? So now to say kingdom or dominion, for those of us who don't like using the word king, because it's not always a king. Like in England, they don't have a king, but they have a malchut. They have a dominion there. So, but you have the word melech built into it, which has to do with ruling, right? Sovereignty or something, malchut. Um, and is it a, and you can tell it's a feminine word because it ends in a tav. And the plural is not malchutot, but it happens a lot that the, the tav, if it ends in a tav, it's going to switch into things. So it's malchuyot. malchuyot. And anyone who has studied um, some Kabbalah may have heard of the malchuyot. Because there's like, they talk about these crowns of levels of stuff and it's, you have to be 40 years old or I have to kill you. And some of you aren't 40 years. So I can't, I can't teach you about Kabbalah yet. <laughs> Just kidding. So, and then you get, speaking of Kabbalah, you get the word Olam. You have heard the word Olam a lot of places. So you say, Baruch Atadonai Eloheinu Melech. Ha Olam. So you say, praise are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the world, the universe, all of eternity, or you say le'olam va'ed, which means to infinity and beyond. (laughs) Um, And so that's, so olam means all of those things. It has to do with as big as you can imagine, kind of, but it also means the world, which isn't as big as I can imagine. It's this much space, but it's a, but it's my biggest space in some sense, or eternity, all of eternity. Um, so olam means those kinds of things. Olam means world or eternity. It ends in a mem. It's not a funky thing. It's not feminine because and it ends in a mem. We're, we're happy when those things work that way. And then we have olamim, which is just taking the word and adding an im to it, except I have to go from a final mem to a not final mem. And then I have another final mem here because now that's the end of the word. Did that blow your mind? I hope so. But I hope it blew in your mind in a way that it made sense finally in a situation like this. This olam mem is no longer the end of the word. So it turned into a, a regular mem. But this one is the marshmallow mem. Olam olamim. And I gave you universe, world, eternity, and universes, worlds, eternities. I gave you all the words there. And then we have shem, which is um, name or reputation, and shemot, which are names. Um, so it's also a reputation. You, when you make a good name for yourself, shem tov, means a good name, which is a reputation. Hmm. One of the ways of talking about God is Hashem. If you add Ha to this, you get the name because it's the ineffable name. It's the name that you cannot say. It's the name that we don't even think about saying. It's the name that we don't dare say. I, I think I've told you this before, that I had a, a guy come to me at the end of my one of my adult classes I was teaching it at the synagogues, at the other synagogues still. And he came to me kind of whispering. He says, 
I think that the Jews really do know how to say God's name, but they just don't want to tell, right? <laughs> no, that's not what it is. We really don't know how to say it because <laughs> we don't. Because we were commanded not to say it, not to take we God's should name. should have said yes. <laughs> yes, we all know. <laughs> do you want to be Jewish? If I make you Jewish, poof, I just have to snip you, and then I could tell you all the secrets of the universe. No, it doesn't work like, like you know. He, I think he may have been the same guy who asked me, so what's the name of your congregation? Why is your congregation called the Children of the Penis? I'm glad you asked that. I, that's not what we're called. We're B'nai Tzion. That's not the same thing as Zion. Why are we called that? I don't know. Anyway, I'm so glad we're still recording this. I'm going to stop recording. That's the vocabulary we will talk about. I am going to, I, I will put this on the record. I haven't stopped recording yet. The name of the chapter is Possessive Endings. Um, I, here's, here's your hint. You don't worry, have to worry about the possessive endings that much. I want you to really know your pronouns. I, you, he, she, it, ani, ata, at, who, he. I want you to know all of them really well before we get to next week, okay? That's going to be your hint. Know your pronouns. Ani, ata, at. Who, he, anachnu, atem, aten, hem, hein. Use those flashcards. Use those a lot. I want you to know those. If you can know those and you know the vocabulary we've had so far, um, then the possessive endings, as scary as it, if I told you I was going to teach you pronominal suffixes, watch how many people, look, Marla fainted. We don't even see her anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and that, <laughs> she went, Poof. I saw her go down. No, but if I say pronominal suffixes, just kidding, Marla, um, then you're going to see people. But I promise you, it's a lot easier than it sounds, but it's really helpful if you just know your pronouns first the I, you, he, she, it's just know those, know those words, and then you'll see that this stuff is, is way easier than it looks. It's taking pages and pages for us to teach it to you, and it's not that scary. Okay. So I'm okay. sorry, that's as far as we've gone. And now it's, we've gone way late. I'm going to stop recording now.